Folks, I want to um, call to order the Municipal Audit Committee. And I'd like to start with introductions and we can start on this side of the room. I'm Elizabeth Jensen with the Assembly Clerk's Office. Mike Chadwick, Internal Audit. Jeff Steele, Assembly. Tom Fan, Controller. Amy Dimbossi, Assembly. Ready. Just here. I'll be Craig Jackson, um, Chair of the Audit Committee, Second. Municipal Audit Committee. Peterson just visiting. Uh, George Michaelis, Municipality Member. Okay, thank you. And part of the Audit Committee's responsibilities in 2.20080 is to selectively review management action taken to implement audit recommendations contained in all audit reports. And this particular audit, I thought, um, warranted a little bit further discussion by the audit committee, so that's why one of the reasons why we're here today. So I'd like to start with um, internal audit to just go over um, an overview of the findings and recommendations. Um, thank you. Sure. I have a couple extra copies with someone. Yeah, I've read it, but I'm Can I get a copy? Yeah. Overall, we found that uh, payments were properly approved, adequately supported with proper documentation and made to legitimate and approved vendors. However, we did note uh, a couple of things that need to have uh, improvement. In our first finding, we found that payments to vendors were not always made timely. Uh, in fact, 23% of the judgmentally selected invoices that we tested, we found that the payments were made between 34 and 98 days after the invoices were received. So we pulled an additional sample, and we found that 25% of those payments were uh, delayed due to normal business practices, but the other 75% um, were delayed by factors as uh, misdirected or misplaced invoices, routing delays, additional paperwork requirements, those types of things. And our second finding, we found that invoices received by departments were not always entered into PeopleSoft in a timely manner. PMP states that invoices should be entered within 10 days of receipt of the invoice. We found that 34% of the invoices were entered into PeopleSoft more than 10 days after the receipt of the invoice date. And then on our third finding, on page four, we found that invoices were not always forwarded to departments in a timely manner. And then we give various examples <coughs> of how the invoices were routed through the various uh, departments until they ended up in the right place. And that, uh, how were our findings? We had these two findings. Okay, um, any comments from the audit committee before I ask the, um, the management's comments and make my own comment? No? Okay. Um, uh, most of management's response was, you know, when we get, when SAP is implemented, things will get better. But um, in my opinion, there are, you know, some issues that, to me, really doesn't have anything to do with SIP, SAP. So I want to um, provide um, the administration or management an opportunity to respond to these recommendations. So okay. Thank you. Um, so first off, I'm sure everyone's aware we're decentralized. So my department upstairs processes what people in the field are doing. We don't actually input invoices. We don't actually stamp invoices. That is all done in the field. So, and I'm new, and so the reason that my recommendations were basically SAP all related was because everyone's going to have to be retrained on the system. So we're going to have all the users, everyone who inputs these invoices from the field, everyone who date stamps, and everyone who, who sets up POs to, to direct where the invoice is going to come, whether it's going to come directly to my department or whether it's going to go to the individual outlying departments. That will all be addressed with SAP with the super training. So I will have the opportunity to train and to update everybody on what is expected of them as far as uh, you know, the 10-day, the, the stamping of the invoices and the directing of the invoices. So rather than have to you know, go out and reach out to 20 different people in the city that input invoices, this SAP is going to be the time when everyone's together and so we can lay out over what's expected of them. And in addition, we went over the PMPs uh, and some of these might have been updated or changed, and so that will, will be rolled out as well. 
Um, so that was the reason, rather than try to you know try to tackle the detail and figure out who's doing what. I'm just going to do it all at the same time when we when we roll on SAP. Okay. Um, any comments before I make a comment from anybody here, um, Tim? I'm just saying, yeah, it just sounds like it's a process problem, and, and just got to get the process right. It makes sense to do it with SAP unless it's going to be too long or it's something you could do quicker, uh, at least to get the standard out. Well, we haven't come up with any late payments, or nothing's come to my attention from vendors. I mean, I do get calls, but, but it's never late payments from vendors. Um, and I think, you know, as far as like when an invoice comes in, because I've had my staff try to, try to do it. And, and it's confusing. I mean, you look at some of these and they've gone to you know, three or four different departments, so it's not just my department that's getting it wrong, it's the next department that can't figure out what it is or where it goes. And so we're trying to incorporate the PO process to, to require all vendors to put the PO on the invoice so we can identify them. Because it is really hard to identify where the invoices go. Um, and on some of these, on one of these that was like, it went through like three different departments, it still managed to get paid on time, which was kind of interesting. But um, it, it, it is a process that, that we, we're going to have to figure out because being decentralized, you know, we're responsible for the payments and we're responsible for the overall processes. But I'm not. I don't manage the people in the field. They have their own suit. They have their own hierarchy. Um, so that's you know again SAP. We're going to address it all. All in one lump. Right, and let, I'm, I'm going to make one comment before Amy talks. And I just want you to recognize, um, Tom, that this meeting is not to point fingers. Right. Okay, it's just our responsibility as an audit committee to have a little bit further discussion on certain audits that that warrant further discussion. And that's all. Amy, you next. Thank you, you're Madam welcome. Chair. Um, Mr. Fink, uh, can you repeat for me what you're saying? You're trying to get the vendors to put on all their POs. Uh, a, a lot of times when we get the invoice, there's no identifying box. There's no, there's no way to, to know right away where it goes. And a lot of times there's no PO, so we can't even look it up. Um, and so we're going to try to get, working with the purchasing department, you know, when we submit bids, when we put out a PO and send it to the vendor, it's very clear on there. Um, I'm not exactly sure on the wording, and I need to work with Ron on that, but it's going to be either you know, PO needs needs to be there, or something evident needs to be there, so we know where to put these invoices. Um, and we've even discussed, and again, it hasn't been laid out yet. We've even discussed, you know, kicking it back if, if they don't put the the identifying information that will make it easy for us to direct the. I, I would I, just out of practical experience, I would, you know, moving forward, I would say that's exactly what happens. It gets rejected, because otherwise, if you let it in the system. And you don't have the tracking ability or something to divert. It goes here, it goes there, wherever. That's when you're going to get lost. Right. Uh, but my second question is, when do you anticipate having this training and having SAP to a place where you can actually utilize the benefits of that program? Well, when, when it's rolled out, so when SAP launches, everyone's going to have to be trained on the new system. So there's going to be training classes. Um, there's certain people right now that are going to be super users and they're going to be a little bit more involved in the process so they can roll it out. So there will be meetings when I have this all AP together where you know, I can address this, you know, the specific audit and also reinforce the new PMPs. And I'm not exactly sure what's changed, but I know you guys have approved whatever we did do. Um, and kind of lay out the expectations and um, kind of go over what we, what we expect and, and the issues that we've been having. So hopefully, because another thing with SAP is you have to realize is, is the current system with PeopleSoft, all the invoices are in the field. We don't, I don't have access to an invoice upstairs. With SAP, they'll be required to attach everything. So we'll have a little bit more control if something's late or if something, you know, the vendor calls and has a problem. We can actually look up the invoice ourselves, look at the tracking, look at the, the signatures and the dates and all that, versus having to send it back to the field and, and, and hope to get something back. Well, that makes sense. May I follow up? Um, Mr. Michaelis, my question is to you. Um, if this training or, or trying to rectify some of the issues is not going to happen until SAP is basically online, do we know when that is? I know that it's a moving target a little bit, but I guess where I'm going is I'm challenged by the fact we may be waiting a few months to try to help 
you know, if there's maybe 20 supervisors that supervise, the people, or maybe five supervisors that supervise 20 people doing this, maybe it's time to, if it's going to be a few months, maybe get the group together, the supervisors together, and say, hey, listen, this is where we're looking, and follow up with your own departments. I'm not sure what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, so, you know, we've highlighted some uh, obvious issues that come to the forefront. We've identified maybe one or two reasons what makes that happen, but there's also a third reason. And the third reason is that when they finally do get the invoice, and they marry the invoice up with what actually came on board, you find sometimes there's discrepancies there, and we don't pay. We don't pay until the discrepancies are rectified. The discrepancies could be anywhere from missing items to broken items. And so that also further delays. It's in, in the process, a lot of times that's not picked up because either it's not documented or it's just not picked up in the process as to what causes those type of delays. But I do think on the routing, which is an issue, because if a vendor does not put that PO in there, uh, we could have multiple departments ordering the same type of thing, and you don't know where this damn item is going. It could be different numbers, but you don't know where unless they go back into the system and have to go all the way back through and track where is this PO, you know, where is it. So I think number one is, I think that's a great idea. If the, if the vendor does not properly fill out the damn uh, invoice, then it gets kicked back. Yeah, it doesn't even get into the system yet. Gets kicked back. Okay. I think that will solve problem number one. And then problem number two is, once we get automated, uh, it'll be so much faster because just tracking of the diet item and also tracking if there's discrepancies in the orders uh, when it's received will also be automated. So that'll make it an awful lot faster. Uh, so I, I, all I can tell you is that um, we're aware what the problems are. And, uh, and, and like uh, Tom said, you know, it's a multiple faceted thing. You've got issues you know, that can be determined by the purchasing department. His folks can determine folks and some things. At the department level, the people that are receiving the goods and it's actually doing the PO uh, or the invoices, verifying the invoices, you know, that always can be improved too. But you've got so many bits and pieces in it right now that there's no one central system that captures it. Once we are able to do that, just like over in the school district, uh, just to steal, you know, that's all automated. And so you can track it from the time that it goes out to the time it goes in to the time it's paid. It, it's all pretty much uh, seamless. So I guess just to follow up on my, on my point, though, um, my concern is if SAP isn't going to be live for six months, what are you going to do in the interim? Well, I, I don't. I don't know the next six months. Uh, I think Tom can address it a little bit. Well, if I can, if I can add something other than the the late payment. Um, these other issues really have no monetary damages. So we don't date stamp it when we get it. Yeah, we should do it. It's a good policy. It does help with the audit trail to figure out what's happening. But as long as it gets paid on time, it gets paid on time. So it's not, you know, that really isn't a, 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 big, a big problem. It's just really the timing of the payment. And since we don't have a history of complaints or we don't pay interest fees, so, so there's not even a history of late payment type stuff, it really, to, to alleviate your concern about the time, you know, if, if we were getting a lot of complaints, I'd say we have to nip them, but now I have to go out and visit these people myself. But since we're not having a history of people complaining or vendors dropping us because we're slow on pay, I, I really think that kind of lessens, lessens the six months or however, whatever time frame we might have in our mind for SAP. It kind of lessens, lessens that damage. Thank you. But, but I think you're always going to have, I'm sorry, I That's think okay. you're always going to have the, the, the education piece of the vendor because no matter what system we go to, they've got to have the right documentation on it for us to be able to track, track regardless. So that, that's something that needs to be done anyway, I think. You know, right. If, if uh, we have large occurrences of that happening, then that needs to be fixed. Right. And I have a few comments. Okay. Um, unless I don't remember, but I don't remember an accounts payable audit being this um, intense. And you know, I'm going to use the word intense, I don't remember. Um, and I don't need to talk about my history, but I've been around a long time. Um, and I would have thought that you know, requiring vendors to identify departments um, would have been, been taken care of quite some time ago, but obviously it hasn't. And I'm glad to hear that that's going to happen, because it really needs to happen. 
And then you talked about P and P's. They send me sign off. We don't sign off on P and P. Didn't we present? The didn't they have to be presented to the assembly? Any changes for SAP? I thought that all well, was SAP, no. but okay, policy. Well, I mean, no. But, well, I'm sorry for SAP. In other words, with SAP coming on board, we had to address all of our P and P's to update them for the for so, the anticipated. Okay. So so let go ahead. Yeah, sure. So let me let me clarify. So as as I understand it, what's happening is because of SAP. Current procedures are being changed drastically. Right? Or reviewed at least. And as a result of that, internally, uh, new procedures have to be established. Right. And as they're developing the system and uh, and as the system is uh, uh, found to be working, then they're developing the procedure for that particular system. So when it's all said and done, you know, there'll be new procedures that everybody will be trained on. And I think those are the procedures he's talking about. As far as going to the assembly, the only time with the new uh, ordinance that was passed, the only time that we go to the assembly is on those items that are more regulatory in nature than they are a procedure, internal procedure. And the guidelines that's being used by the legal department, and I think that's probably the right guideline, is who does it affect? Does it affect the municipal employee as to how they do their business, or does it affect somebody outside of the municipality? If it affects somebody outside of the municipality, then you could make the argument that's more of a regulation as opposed to a procedure internally. So I know that new procedures are being developed, not only just in the finance arena, but also in the um, employee uh, arena as well, the personnel arena, to accommodate the new system that comes on board. So I think that's what we're talking about. Right, here. but here's my point. My point was the <coughs> policies and procedures for the municipality just don't come to the assembly for approval. Mayor signs okay. off on it. Just, you know, I mean, and you said you're new, just so you know. They yeah, because the SAP people and came okay. and they said, there's all these, there's a deadline, this needs, I thought they said they did something. Yeah, yeah, and we, we're probably talking about two different things okay. and it's really not important. I just like to be um, pretty accurate, I'll at least know what I'm talking about. And, um, and I think that another issue is probably turnover, you know, throughout the municipality, you know, because I know it's really difficult if you get an invoice and you've been around for a while, you have a better chance of identifying where it goes, but if you haven't, you know, it's, it's chaos, you know, and I know- A lot of them are very cryptic. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I know, so I'm really- Right, so I'm really glad that we're gonna put that procedure, we're gonna put that procedure in place like pretty quick, right? As, as far as the vendors identifying when they send out an invoice of where it's supposed to go. Because that's well, not I'll have to work, science. I'll have to work with purchasing because my understanding was is it, it's kind of the way it is now because everyone's working on SAP and there's not a lot of time to stop and, and lay out procedures. What right. we know it's shortly coming down the line. Right. right. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Ron here. Okay. I'll talk to Ron because, uh, you know, it's something that he can do uh, to the vendors. I think so. Yeah, it's something they can get the word out, and then what the other thing you can do is, you know, if uh, if it's wrong, they just send it back. They'll get the word eventually anyway. Right, and if you want to do business in the yeah. bank, you can follow the rules, because yeah. I don't think it's a big deal to put a department in, a, in the computer. But anyway, um, does anybody else have any questions? Tim, that's yeah, right. Yeah, uh, as, as, as long as the procedures are clear internally and we're not wasting a lot of time, ship it to this department, this department trying to identify what it is. It seems to me that even in the interim, uh, a quick review of what the procedures are or a uh, suggesting that people uh, need to remember that these are the procedures. It, it just seems to me uh, there's a lot of time wasted in the process. Maybe we're paying them on time, uh, but we need to refresh people's memory as to what the requirements are and what the procedures are so that we don't have all this stuff uh, going back and forth. It just uh, sounds like a hit or miss kind of thing where uh, uh, you're trying to identify it. Like you said, there may be two or three different departments that are doing the same thing. So um, it, the critical thing is, first off, it does have to have the invoice number. And then from there, you should be able to find where it goes. And uh, uh, that alone would solve a lot of heartache, I think, on people's part, to just shuffle the paper back. And then when the SAP comes on, we have the procedures for that. Everything, everything works fine. So. Thank you. Um, did you want to make a comment, Mike? Okay. Any any other comments on this? I have one. Go ahead. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, I hear what you guys are saying about SAP coming on. My hesitation is I don't know when that is. And so if, Mr. McHale, <coughs> you can talk to Ron 
I still, um, I, I hear what Mr. Frank's saying about, you know, we haven't had a lot of complaints. I would rather not be complaint driven. I would rather be proactive. And from the findings in here, essentially 23% were over the 30 day paid late. That seems like a big percentage to me. So anything, it might, I would feel much better, anything you can do to talk to the supervisors to kind of get them on, whether it's just like Mr. Still said, kind of give people a quick refresher. Hey, make sure this is filled out this way. Make sure to tell your people. At least that's something proactive we could do. I mean, that would make me feel so, better. So, so there's, there's two things that I'll do. Uh, one is I'll talk to Ron Abbey. Um, and just make them aware that, you know, they really need to start tightening up on these vendors. Because, like, you know, we've had new vendors, we, you know, all the time dealing with vendors, so we need to we need to tighten that up. The other thing is, uh, you know, when I get all my department heads together, uh, I'll emphasize the fact that they am sure that they, you know, handle these things and, 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 you know, pay attention to what they're putting down in writing so everybody understands that they're using the right part number, they're using the right, you know, process, so we'll do that. That, that really alleviates some of my concerns because it's just this nebulous, I don't know when SCP is coming online. So I'd rather not just sit out there going, oh, we know it's a problem, we're not doing anything. So a little quick conversation I think would have a big impact, I'm sure. Um, thank you. And um, I just want to say I really appreciate everybody's comments, and, but I really appreciate your comments because they're the same questions that I had. So thank you for asking your questions. And if there's no other comments on this, on item number two, um, number three, we can just move on to number four. And number four is um, a revision to the 2014 audit plan, and the code requires that the audit committee review and comment on any audit plan revisions. And I know that there is a um, request to the audit department to do some work concerning the fire department payroll grievance settlement. So, Mike, do you want to talk about it first, or? Sure. Okay, thank um, you. We were not requested uh, to revise our audit plan. Instead, uh, this audit came to us as part of a grievance settlement between the fire department, the union, not the fire department, the union, and the municipality. Uh, as part of this grievance settlement, we were asked to look at fire department payroll for the last uh, basically went back to July of 2012 up until the present. And uh, we've attained assistance from uh, some contractors, with two uh, temporary contractors who will be with us starting this Monday. Um, and this will take a lot of time. We anticipate spending from about four to six months uh, going through these payroll records. Uh, it's, it's not simple. And I don't, very few people, I think, truly understand how complicated this really, this really is. This is a very complicated task where we're looking at three different databases between Telestaff, Kronos, and PeopleSoft, and ensuring that hours recorded in those three systems match, essentially. And it, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a highly analytical process you have to go through. Uh, and you have to get, there's a learning curve under, to understand what the different codes are because codes in Telestaff may not be quite the same code in Kronos and it may not be quite the same code in PeopleSoft. Uh, so the codes kind of change from system to system, although the code may mean the same thing, it changes. So you have to look at those hours and see if they're filtering through correctly. So it's a very labor intensive process so that's why we felt one auditor doing it would take couldn't accomplish it within six months and the grievance settlement tells us we need to come once we start we need to be done within six months so that's why we got two contractors to, temporary employees or contractors to help us with this madam chair my understanding is it's a hundred percent audit is that correct is it a hundred percent audit of all those records for that period of time all the it, yes yes there's that's yes. What I had to a union a union record a yeah. union employees not yeah. no I not reps yeah hundred percent what's monetary risk in terms of is it the is it the appropriate thing to do I mean uh, it, we're going to spend a lot of time and effort and money on it well uh, I, there, I know that um, I don't I don't need a number I'm just saying that's a fact. yeah I, and I I couldn't give you a number yeah. to too but I I can say that I I know that. Um, 
the internal auditor has looked at it before, but they did samples and they did some specific cases that were brought to their attention. And if I remember correctly, and this was a few months ago, and, and you know, you certainly did a good job of summarizing it, but as I understand it, uh, you, you have two major issues. Certainly one of the issues is human error on an input, okay? But the other issue, and it, it was mentioned, is that when you're trying to follow through the system, when you put the human, puts the input in to one of the systems, and then it's supposed to automatically transpose into the next system, and depending, in some cases, it's three systems that, that are trying to, you know, the same data is trying to get into these three systems, that the error has actually been in the conversion from one system to the other. And so some of those uh, records, uh, those mistakes, were certainly the three systems not being able to talk right to each other in their codes. And so that certainly uh, allowed for a lot of the mistakes. And then the other, of course, is just the, the simple human error. And then the third was, as I understand it, and it was more in the final uh, check, is that because of the complications and the codes and everything else, it was in a lot of cases very difficult to ascertain what the right information was to begin with. Okay, so I, I think um, you know we know what the problems are, but as a result of the settlement, uh, they wanted 100 percent inventory, 100 uh, percent uh, look at the uh, at the union employees. So that's why we're doing it. We we already know what's causing the problems and those are being rectified, and they certainly will be rectified, you know, once we go live, so. Is that pretty much a, a fair, that's, that's a fair assessment. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, can I ask a, just Please. a technical question? So, considering this is part of a settlement, do we need to revise the 2014 audit plan to incorporate this, or since they're already doing it? I mean, how does that work? Well, I can say this, you know, the code says, you know, any changes in the audit plan needs to be reviewed and commented on by the audit committee. And I didn't know about this change, but when I became aware of it, that's why I added it to the agenda. And what we're doing right now is, is reviewing um, the audit plan. And, and actually, you know, the audit plan needs to be revised based on an addition to um, new work, whether it's in-house or out-house, correct? Yeah. Okay. This will take significant time. Uh, a pretty small shop and to take one of our auditors for four to six months and devote them specifically to this one task means other things won't get done. You want to um, I would like to follow up and this is you know just my own absolute um, perfectionist in me. Um, I want to right now make a disclosure that my husband's an AFD employee so um, obviously he is a member of the union um, and before I participate in any action on the audit committee, Madam Chair, I don't believe there's a substantial financial gain. I have no idea that any of his pay checks were wrong, but I would like you as a chair to make a ruling in if I have a conflict. And I appreciate um, your disclosure, Ms. Dembowski, and I don't think you have a conflict, and if anybody else does, forever speak now or forever hold your peace. <coughs> Mr. Trainer, you were next. Thank, Thank you. you. Question, what's the cost associated with this, and where's the money coming from? Is we're going to have two employees that work for, what, six months? Well, we have them right now for, I believe it was up to, we believe we can, uh, we're hoping to be able to finish it within four months. But then we have the, 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 the actual work, but then we have to look at the, analyze it a little bit, find a report, those types of things. We uh, have budgeted, not out of our budget, this is coming from the fire department budget, $50,000 for those two people. We've already got the money put aside in the fire department to do the this. The fire department, yes. Okay. Well, thank you, sir. And any other comments before I make a comment? So I think what we need to do now is, I believe that the committee, unless somebody doesn't, is endorsing that change to the audit plan. And um, what needs to happen is there needs to be a revision, and they certainly need to approve that revision, or as in, you know, like we do when we get an audit plan. So I'm going to lean on you to take care of that. Okay. okay. Um, any other comments? Uh, just, just one question. Please. So, with that additional help, you, uh, you'll be able to take on this additional mission in your audit plan. Is that correct? Yes, but. Or is it going to displace? It, it will just. Dis it'll have to displace something. So that I think that's what we probably need to figure out. Right? Which what we're going to take out yeah. of plan. 
something so, I'll have to dispute because that one auditor will still be working for at least four to six months right. on and, this, is what we anticipate. Right, an internal audit usually recommends what we take out when we put something in, so do you have that recommendation? You know, I always anticipated that question. Well, thank you, George, and for I, asking that. And I brought the audit plan, and I looked at it, then I thought, I'm not sure I want to make a recommendation without Pete. <laughs> See Pete coming back on Monday saying, you recommended what? So I'd prefer to talk with Pete before we, uh, okay. before I recommended taking then, out something. Then why don't I say, what makes sense? It, it, it makes a lot of sense, okay? So why don't I say this so we don't have to you know, have another meeting on this uh -huh. subject. You work with Pete and okay. just let um, uh, the audit committee know what the decision is and okay. then you can put forward the document to the assembly and mayor, okay? okay? Does that sound good, everybody? All right, um, any other comments? Well, I just want to say that this is my last audit committee meeting, um, and I, it was an honor to serve as a chair of the audit committee, I think, for, for the last five years. It's been quite a while. Committee. Yeah, and, and I've enjoyed it, um, but I'm moving on. Um, and I, Bill Starr is the new audit committee chair, and I'm sure you'll have a great time working with him. And um, again, thank you, everybody. And. Um, did you bring me any departing gifts? <laughs> we forgot the black. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were a bottle of water. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. I'm honored. I'm honored. <laughs> but anyway, again, thank you. And, and I'll miss this committee because I really um, enjoy working with everyone. But anyway, um, the meeting's adjourned.